welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all good. Today we're doing another book haul. I'm so excited. I love book hauls. Book hauls are one of my favorite videos to film because I just love, I love to talk about what I want to read. <laughs> but I feel like it, my last one was in February. February, everyone. Wow. I've been good at not acquiring wow. too many books. Too many, oh, there's more books. I need to talk about the video that I haven't got laid out. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. So yeah, we've got a lot of books to talk about. It's all the books I've acquired between then and now. I've been trying really hard not to acquire too many books. I've been trying to restrain myself um, because money. <laughs> need to save money. So now I do have to say, my filming schedule and my neighbors playing music schedule, we seem to be in sync. <laughs> so you can hear I hear anything, I apologize. So we're gonna have different categories. What should we start with? Let's start with the books that I've been gifted from my wish list. to my grandparents gifted me out of the blue they just decided to get me some books which was so kind of them oh I do have to say we have got I'm not gonna try and pick them up now <laughs> we've got three fairy loot boxes to unbox but I think I'm gonna leave that to the end but we're gonna do an unboxing and we've got three big boxes to unbox so I'll leave timestamps for the sections down below so you can skip between what you want anyway yeah my grandparents gifted me two books out of the blue which was just so kind and they're new releases that I'm super excited about so first we have Only on the Weekends by Dean Atta which is chunky it's she's huge but she's so beautiful it's 500 pages <laughs> See, so Dean Atta's books are told in verse, so it won't take as long to read as like a normal 500 page novel, but still, I wasn't, it came and I was like, holy shit, <laughs> I was counting on this to be like a readathon pick, and I got it and I was like, ah shit. <laughs> but Dean Atta wrote The Black Flamingo, which was one of my favourite kind of like, I think, was it in my top 10 last year? It might have been in my top 10 books last year. It's about a boy who's hopelessly in love with I think his boyfriend yeah he starts dating this guy but then the guy moves away and then he starts to fall in love with another guy fall in love with another guy so it's like who do I go for like what's going on anyway I was just gonna read whatever Dean Atta came out with next because I would say I, his verse is my favorite book in verse I've ever read I mean I love Elizabeth Athevedo she's kind of the one who I feel like popularized it within the YA scene but there was something about the way that the Black Flamingo wrote like was written only the words that were needed to tell a story and it was gorgeous and so poignant with what it said so super excited to get to this one and then the other one is one of my most anticipated books of the year and it is Siren Queen by Nemo isn't she so gorgeous it came with a few like oil marks in it though from Amazon which Amazon come on now I can't get them off there's like one I don't know if you can see it there's like one there that's really annoying me <laughs> So you better pay, you can pay for me to have a new set of extensions. The fucking hair is frazzled. But I love the cover. Isn't she just, she is the moment. She is the moment. I've been so excited for this. A while ago I asked on Twitter, I need your like old Hollywood recommendations. I need them. <laughs> Since I read Evelyn Hugo, I mean, I read that book years and years and years ago and I've wanted something. I don't know why, this is our posture for today, everyone. Um, <laughs> I wanted something with that old Hollywood setting that looks at like the deals that are made and like th this cutthroat industry I just think is so interesting for books why aren't we writing more of it and I love Nevo but I've only read the When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain and The Empress of Sword and Fortune I have The Chosen and The Beautiful still to read but I just know this is set you know in old Hollywood it seems like noir and mysterious and it's not too long it's under 300 pages i think it's really gonna look at the dark side of hollywood and perhaps even have a, like a fantastical edge so i screamed when i saw this i was gonna buy this myself so i just feel so happy to have it and then one of my lovely subscribers and patrons rachel gifted me two books i did a vlog where this book app which i love called novelic picked what i read and i discovered this book by francis harding which turned out to be one of my favorite books <laughs> skin full of shadows one of my favorite books i've read so far this year and Rachel gifted me the other two Francis Hardings that I put on my wish list after I read that book which are The Lie Tree and Deep Light. I don't know much about either of these plots to be honest I because I went into A Skin Full of Shadows so blind like I'd never heard of the book before I didn't really know the plot that's how I just when I enjoy an author that way I kind of want to keep it that way but Francis Harding has just some of the most beautiful writing that's so intelligent for 
YA, the kind of mix of fantastical, historical, magical and mystery that I love. Like I love that combination. That's constantly what I'm on the lookout for. I want a mystery. I want it to be historical and I want fantastical. Like that's that's really the crux of what I really, I really love that intersection. So yeah, I'm so excited for both of these. Deep Light I think is the newest one. So maybe I'll get to this one first. The Underwater Gods of the Myriad. Myriad, is that how you pronounce it? Were as real as the coastlines and currents. Oh my God, this sounds so interesting. We need this, this is essential. This is a crisis. I'm very, very excited. So thank you so much, Rachel, for gifting me those. Okay, let's quickly go over the books that publishers sent me, because there's not a load of them. So I have four books here that publishers have sent me. What should we talk about first? Oh, I know what we're talking about first. Arguably my most anticipated release of the year, of the rest of the year, which I need to read, but I want it to be in a vlog that does well. <laughs> I want as many of you to see my opinion on it as possible because I know I'm gonna love it so I want to promote it so I'm trying to think of a vlog idea that will get a lot of views so that I can promote this book a lot uh, and I haven't thought of it yet and it is I'm the girl by Courtney Summers I cannot believe it Courtney Summers can I just say I mean I'm biased in this I'm gonna admit that I'm biased because um Courtney Summers is the most lovely author I've ever had an interaction with after I read the project and absolutely loved it I cried um in a vlog someone sent it to Courtney and she emailed me saying thank you and she sent me um, a signed copy of the Barnes and Noble edition of the project and she's just like we've emailed back and forth and she's just incredibly kind she said my channel's awesome <laughs> she's so kind and so you know she's one of the only there's not many authors I've given I've read two books from and I've given them both five stars you know I think of maybe and they're, they're standalones as well, right? It's Theodora Goss I obviously love, but it's I've only read a series from her and the series is a five star series. But you know, Tele Jenkins Reid is another one who all the books I've read, I've given five stars. There's not many of them. And I just know I'm gonna give this five stars. <laughs> Not a joke, just a fact. So I feel so lucky to have been given a physical arc of this. This was sent to me by the American publisher, which has never happened to me before. And I just feel so incredible. I mean, I'm just, the words are here for me to read. I just need to find the right time. I'm gonna read you out the synopsis because I want as many people to be as excited about this as possible. So Courtney Summers' quote at the top says, this is the world that enabled Jeffrey Epstein. With I'm the girl, I'm coming for its throat. I mean, are you not crying? <laughs> Are you not screaming, crying, throwing up? When 16-year-old George Avis discovers the dead body of 13-year-old Ashley James, she teams up with Ashley's older sister, Nora, to find and bring the killer to justice before he strikes again. But their investigation throws Georgia into a world of unimaginable privilege and wealth without consequence or conscience. And as Ashley's killer closes in, Georgia will discover when money, power, and beauty rule, it might not be a matter of who is guilty, but who is guilty is. I love the kind of unflinching look at the dark side of the world that Courtney Summers has in, in the books. I, I can't put into words how much I really just love what Courtney Summers stands for and writes about. And I'm just so excited. <laughs> I can't wait to read it, but I need to think of an idea. Like I could do like reading my most anticipated 2022 releases, whatever. But like, mm, is that gonna get the girlies to click as much as other things are? I don't know. So. <laughs> Then we have When Women Were Dragons by Kelly Barnhill. This is already out. The other, the other books I'm gonna show you are already out. So I am, you yeah. know, chop chop Megan, chop chop. This one has tiny, like probably the tiniest font I've ever had in a book. So a bit scared, like when it arrived, I was like, oh, it's short, great. Uh, it's very tiny font. <laughs> I've never read Kelly Barnhill before. And this is a book set in America in 1955. And I think women turned into dragons. <laughs> And like they they rebel against the constraints that they find themselves in and turn into dragons. And you know what? I love that. I love that. She's a feminist. I can't. This is on the back. In a world that keeps women small, what happens when they rise up? Oppressed, unleashed, reborn women take flight. Oh, isn't that so exciting? I'm really, really excited to read this. You know, it's got the historical edge setting. It's reimagining. It's putting a fantastical twist on it. So very excited to read this. Then, oh my God, I love this arc so, so much. We have Book of Night by Holly Black. Yeah, I haven't read it, guys. I haven't read it yet. I know I need to. I've, again, with this one, I mean, it's been so hyped. I've tried not to get into the plot too much. I just know it's about this girl who has kind of lived a past life. I think of like thievery and, you know, 
bad bad choices and she's trying to put her past behind her but then it starts catching up with her i know there's something to do with shadows and shadow magic <laughs> Not really sure what that's about, but I have heard mixed things about this already coming out, but I'm very excited. It reminds me a lot of Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. You know, you've got a character who's kind of had a bit of a iffy past, and I am still very, very excited to read it. I'm very excited to be introduced to Holly Black, and I, I figured I would rather be introduced with her adult stuff like I was with Lee Bardugo. I thought that would be the best course of action. So yeah, Secret Societies, it seems very Ninth House to me, and I don't want to compare them too much because I think they get compared a lot, these authors but I can't help it when I see the similarities. <laughs> and then finally, we have got The Comfort Book by Matt Haig. There's an interesting story behind this. So the publishers sent me um, this book, which I am so grateful for. It came out last year, I believe, but they were kind of, I think, promoting the paperback. So they sent me the paperback. I'm really, really excited to read it. I love Matt Haig's outlook often on life and his discussions around mental health. So I'm very excited about this. But more <laughs> what I want to talk about is they sent out some chocolates, right, with this. and. I have basically discovered from that I'm allergic to cashews. <laughs> so thanks guys. <laughs> yeah, I ate these chocolates and they made me really ill. And then I went, I was telling my patrons, I went and got allergy tested. It's not 100% sure. We're like 70% sure because I did the skin prick test for all the nuts <laughs> where he would put a bit of, um, like a liquid. It was very interesting. I was like a science experiment. I know people who have had these done a lot probably don't find them interesting, but for me, I'd never done this before. He put like a drop of, I think like concentrated that nut and he'd prick my skin through that drop and I came out in lumps for cashews and pistachios and the chocolates had the cashews in them. So that's how I found out. I am probably, I need to get a blood test to be 100% sure, but I'm probably allergic to them. <laughs> so thank you. This is crazy. I'm really, really excited to read this. I feel like it's the kind of thing I could actually, maybe I should read like a, cause the chapters are often one page. Should I read like a chapter a day rather than read it in a vlog? I might do that. Maybe that would be good for my mental health. <laughs> Next, let's get into the books I bought myself, which is the biggest stack, so prepare yourselves. So I went to Waterstones and I bought quite a few books. <laughs> The first one I picked up was Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May. So this was a new release, <laughs> just came out and I just I just picked it up. I just did it. <laughs> it's set in 1920s. There's magic, there's rumors of witchcraft. I mean, you just gotta tell me magic and witchcraft. And I'm like, okay, yeah. Okay, put it. That's going straight in my vile skin. <laughs> Ooh, extra spicy sauce. That's going straight in my vile skin. No, it truly is. It's going straight in my basket. I, oh my God, I love this shit. I love, you know, 1920, I mean, isn't that cover? It's so like evocative of the time. I just love it. I just love it. I'm very, very excited to get to this one. Okay, then I picked up a mystery, which I have been, I've been really tempted by for a long time. And I was like, you know what, Megan, let's go for it. <laughs> I picked up Death and Croissants by Ian Morse. So this is like a cozy, whoa. Oh yeah, I got a special bookmark with it. How cute, right? This is like a cozy mystery that's been very popular in the UK. We've got a middle-aged man running a B&B. &B. Uh, however, one day one of his older guests disappears and the only trace a bloody handprint on the wallpaper. Another guest, Valerie, persuades the reluctant Richard to join her investigating disappearance. Then things become really serious and someone murders Ava Gardner, one of his beloved hens. <laughs> oh, I just love it. I really love cozy, simplistic mysteries in like a quaint town. I think this is actually, yeah, I think it's set in France. I think he's an Englishman running a B&B &B in France. It says on the top, the, di the disappearance of a guest is one thing, but you don't mess with a fellow's hens. Oh my God, no, it's Ava. <laughs> She's got crosses on her eyes. <laughs> so silly. I love silly mysteries. And so, you know, I saw it there. It was signed. It has the special little bookmark. So I was like, okay, right. You've convinced me. You've done what is needed. <laughs> I'm going to collapse. No, I don't. I feel faint. I've struck gold, ladies. The next book I picked up, particularly because of one of my patrons, Shanice, read it and really enjoyed it. We've got A Fatal Crossing by Tom Hindle. So this is very much 
been comped to Agatha Christie a lot, which excites me. I just read Death on the Nile, which is on obviously on a boat. November 1924, the Endeavour set sail with 2,000 passengers and a killer on board. So yeah, it's like a murder mystery set on this ship. And I actually went and looked on this author's Goodreads and he reads a lot of Agatha Christie. He reads a lot of like non-fiction related to Agatha Christie. He was just reading actually Murder Isn't Easy by Carla Valentine, which I own, which is about Agatha Christie's use of poisons and her knowledge of poisons. And I'm just like, okay, I feel like I can trust you if you're like in the Agatha Christie rabbit hole with me to write a good mystery. So I think a book set on a ship is always a lot of fun. And I'm really, really excited to give this a go. I think it's a debut, so I'm very excited. And then I have another book, which I believe is set on a ship, and it is Dangerous Women by Hope Adams. So this one's a bit different. We have 180 petty convicts, all ch I don't know why I said that strange, all sentenced to transportation to Australia. But when one woman is murdered, our girly protagonist's work is threatened. She maintains faith in the other's innocence, even when the men leading the investigation do not. So I was doing, I spoke of, did I speak about this? I think I did. I was doing a personalised video for one of my Team Rora patrons. I do them a personalised video every other month, but I am, if you, if you join, I'm behind, okay? <laughs> I just, the start of this year has not been it for me personally behind the scenes. Some stuff has happened and I've struggled a bit and I'm trying to get myself back to like my top peak performance, but it's been hard. But anyway, I was doing a per, I just stabbed myself. I was doing a personalized video. She like gave me like a list of books to choose what to read from. And this was one of them on there and it just sounded so interesting and like the thing I would really, really love. So when I saw this in the bookshop, I was like, I'm picking you up, I'm picking you up. <laughs> You're coming home with me. I have The Winchinger Mystery by Anthony Berkeley. I've spoken about this a lot, so I won't go on about it too much, but it's like a classic crime murder mystery that I'm very excited to read. It was originally published in like 30 part chapters in a newspaper. Does it have a picture? Did I just see a picture? Like a map? Oh my god, it has a map of a room. Ah, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So I'm hoping to read this soon, but I may have to move some videos around. We shall see. And then just some books that I've already read. I won't speak about these too long. We have The Broken Girls and The Rook by so I'm going to say James and Daniel O'Malley, respectively. I read these in my uh, Mara from Books Like Woe booktube twin test video, which I would 100% recommend you go and check out because these were great. These are absolutely amazing. So please go check out that vlog. This one's a fantastical mystery where this woman wakes up in a body that isn't hers and the woman whose body it was knows that she was going to lose her memory and has given her instructions for how to work at her job which is MI5 for wizards essentially that's what I'll tell you about that one and this one is a dual timeline mystery about different girls in different historical stages one set at a boarding school with these four roommates and one in the present day um a girl trying to kind of reconcile herself with the murder of her sister 20 years ago and then I did another video where I read seven books in seven days participating in seven readathons and I read pet in that I didn't love this as much as I wanted to it's set in the city where monsters have been eradicated but jam um, meets this monster not monster like creature called pet who tells jam that there are there is a monster lurking essentially now i have forgotten i wanted to show you just a few of my highlights of the book of the month books next we'll do that next let me go get them okay oh shit <laughs> okay so we'll literally fly through this because you've seen me talk about these already if you don't know i work with book of the month and they send me the selections and i add all of these to my tbr right so technically i haul all of them <laughs> But since I show you them when I get them in the videos, I don't want to show you all of them again. So I just thought I'd show you some of my highlights. My number one highlight that I have gotten is undoubtedly Yerba Buena in the past few months. I, oh, oh, I pre-ordered this originally, but I'm one to save money. So I'm not, <laughs> as soon as I saw this, I canceled my pre-order. Nina Lacour, I absolutely love. I love her writing so, so much. This is her adult debut. And what I really want to know about it is it's about these two girls who have kind of lived difficult lives um, and they meet, their connection is immediate, but the damage both women carry and the choices they have made pulls them apart again and again. I just think this is gonna be like really intimate and human and kind of a slower book, but I am so, so excited to read it. So, so excited. And I don't think it's gonna take me that long. It is under 300 pages and the font is absolutely mahusive. It's really big. This is so big 
It's mind boggling. So I'm just so excited to read this and I feel so lucky that they sent out a copy of that. I just mentioned Simone St. James and how much I love the Broken Girls. I did get a copy of the Book of Cold Cases, which is her 2022 release. This again is dual timeline. We have a murder that happens in 1977. A woman was accused, but she kind of, you know, she got acquitted and retreated to the isolation of her mansion. And then in 2015, 2017 we've got a character who um is a receptionist and by night runs a true crime website and she goes to interview this woman and there's some paranormal aspects like there always is to Simone St. James after reading The Broken Girls I just want to like devour this <laughs> like right away so I'm very excited for this that same month one that keeps interesting me is Tell Me Everything which is non-fiction true story and it's from this private investigator and her history with an essay case I believe and I don't know, I haven't read a lot of nonfiction lately and I wanna learn and I wanna hear from people about their lives. So I keep looking at this as one that I really wanna read soon. And then I think these two were last month's. Um, so I'll just quickly mention them. We have Breathless by Amy McCulloch. This is a thriller set in like a mountain climb, which I think sounds really interesting. Um, Mara was actually speaking about this and she said the lack of oxygen is a really interesting plot point. Like oxygen deprivation and being confused so I haven't loved a lot of snowy thrillers I, well, I loved one by one but I didn't love Shiver so I'm intrigued to see how I'm gonna feel about that one and then we have The Hacienda which is a like horror Mexican gothic meets Rebecca debut suspense novel we have this girl who um is proposed to you by this man she ignores the rumors surrounding his first wife's sudden disappearance sudden demise sorry oh my god <laughs> choosing instead to seize the security that his estate in the countryside provides Provides. She will have her own home again no matter the cost. But Hacienda San Isidro is not the sanctuary she imagined. Ooh. So yeah, Book of the Month constantly just have such great selections, such great picks, and I'm so excited to read all of them. They're all above me up there, but I didn't want to haul them all again for you. Because <laughs> you'd be like, girl, we know. <laughs> okay, did I grab did I I didn't grab uh, scissors, hang on. Scissors acquired. So our last stage is gonna be chatting about the fairy loot boxes that we have to unbox. Oh my God, this one's heavy. So I've got the past three months. I don't know what's here. I have purposely avoided any spoilers for what the books or the items could be. I will try and fly through the items fairly quickly because I could easily spend 15 minutes unboxing each book and talking about it. <laughs> and this vlog is already, vlog? This book haul is already long. Okay, so this is this month's. Let's see what our theme is. Cloak and dagger is our theme. Right, item time. Oh my God, we have a mug. Yes, mugs and candles are my favorite items. Celestial Kingdoms, what is this inspired by? Daughter of the Moon Goddess, <gasps> it's right here. My most beautiful book that I own, also a fairy loot edition. I need to read that soon. Let's look at the mug. Oh my God, it's gonna be designed like the book and I'm gonna cry. <gasps> oh! oh my God, oh my God, it is gorgeous. <sighs> I love it. I love fairy loot mugs. It's purple on the inside. Purple's my favorite color. That's why I love this so much. Purple and pink. I'm quite, you know, I'm a girly. <laughs> oh my God, I love that. Cannot wait to drink stuff out of that. Well, I have, I had literally keep all the fairy loot mugs like as prized possessions. What is this? Stardust tea strainer. Interesting, okay. So this is like a little wooden thing that you put on top of the mug. Look, I have a mug. That's clever, guys. I can demonstrate it. And you put the loose tea in here and then you pour the water through and then you can steep it. I don't drink loose tea, but my dad does sometimes. So he can definitely use this. So it's going to go to good use, I feel like. That's a good item. Oh, we have scrunchies. <laughs> Yay. Well, today is going to be the best day ever. Scrunchies, I will definitely love these. I always have my hair up in a scrunchie. I very rarely wear my hair down in the day to day because it's long and gets annoying. <laughs> so in the day to day, my hair is always up in a messy bun. So these are great for me. Oh my God, I literally just bought more scrunchies than I didn't need to. And oh, we have a bottle opener inspired by Red Rising. Again, I don't know how much use I'll get of that because I don't drink. <laughs> I'm really boring and I don't drink. And we have some foiled mythology bookmarks. Cute, I love the Ford bookmarks they do. I use them a lot actually. Um, I always think they look so cute. What are these inspired by? Loki and Kumiho. 
cute! Isn't that so cute? I love the foiling on them. Okay, let's see what our book this month is. Oh, it's purple. <laughs> Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> it's the Stardust Fuse. I haven't heard of this. I don't know what this book is. I love the purple. Wow! Oh, they've done end page art. Have we got something? <gasps> oh, look at, I just got lipstick on the cover. <laughs> you have shown an incredible lack of respect. <laughs> look at that. Wow, that's so gorgeous. A story inspired by stories from 1001 Nights. It follows a legendary smug smuggler. I really can't talk today, sorry. A cowardly prince and a dangerous quest across the desert to find a legendary mythical lamb. Wow, the cover definitely intrigues me. This looks so interesting. Oh, it's part of a trilogy. <laughs> Better get reading, Megan. <laughs> Next box. We really, we have to get through this, guys. <laughs> Unboxing Fairy Loot. I love it. They make them, my room becomes like an explosion has gone off in my room. It's actually horrific. Okay. Okay. April's is bittersweet. Let's see what we have. <gasps> is this what I think it is? This is what I think it is, isn't it? <gasps> I have wanted one of these. <laughs> oh, I was going to buy one of these off Etsy for myself. So it is a constellation basket inspired by Addie LaRue. So it's like this little basket that you can put your like immediate TBR in, which although I have a TBR cart here, I was telling my patrons I need because I have a stack next to my bed of like the next books I have to read. Oh my God, I'm so happy to own one of these. That is so great. I was needing one of these. It's going to be absolutely perfect. I can store my immediate TBR in there. <gasps> I'm so I can't tell you how happy I am to have one of those because I was gonna buy one myself. Then we have some heart fairy lights. Oh my God, how cute. It's not super long. That is the only thing I would say. Like maybe around my, maybe around my book cart could be nice. I love fairy lights, evidently. There's some right behind me. I'll probably put them around one of my carts. I've got a little tray inspired by the Night Circus, one of my favorite books. Oh, it looks like we have two books. You have changed my life forever. An Arrow to the Moon by Emily X. R. Pan. I haven't heard of this. A modern retelling of Romeo and Juliet infused with Chinese mythology. Gorgeous, oh my God, that sounds very interesting. I love this cover. Is it gonna be like futuristic-y? Okay, and then let's see what the main book is. Oh, she's red and blue, that's interesting. Oh, blood, I'm gonna mispronounce this. Blood Scion? <laughs> I'm really, I'm so bad at pronouncing words, okay? Every word in the English language I'm just terrible at. Wow, this looks so interesting. Wow, look at that, you've got like the cover on the actual hardcover itself. I may just display it like that. Although I mean, look, look at the artwork in the dust jacket though, to be fair. It says, it follows a girl's journey of magic, injustice, power, and revenge. Interesting, I haven't heard of this one again, but I'm definitely intrigued. Okay, last box and last <laughs> stuff that we're showing. I, by the way, it's really hot in my room today, guys. I am struggling. I am well and truly struggling. Just want you to know that. Right, where are the scissors? Here. Oh God, look at the hair. It's all disintegrating. It's melting off. It's just gone. All hope is gone. I lost all hope today. I'm empty. Right, we have a Threads of Fate tea tin. Oh, cute. Okay, it's like a little tin. But I think you can put loose or not loose tea in. Again, I don't drink tea, but my dad might use this. And it has like a second lid to keep it fresh. We have a cushion cover inspired by Ray Bearer. I haven't read Ray Bearer, but a lot of me, a lot of people have told me that I would really like it. We have a wood bookmark. Oh, this is like my favorite thing when they do metal or wood bookmarks. Oh my God, it's so cool. It's inspired by Cersei and it's like wood with this stencil design on it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love, that's going straight there actually. I don't even need to put that back away again. <laughs> okay, and let's see what the book is. Oh my God, it's very cute blue edges. <gasps> this is one of my most anticipated releases of the year. It is the girl who fell beneath the sea by Axio. Oh my God, look at the stencil on the edge. <laughs> Oh, it's another beautiful one. I don't think it quite compares to Daughter of the Moon Goddess, but look at it. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
I love it so much. <laughs> oh, this new thing where they've started doing like beautiful, really detailed um, end paper design is just like my favorite thing. <laughs> So this is about a girl who I think every year there's a sacrifice to the sea god. Yeah, each year a maiden is thrown into the sea, but her brother's uh, bride is sacrificed. Her brother follows her in and then she throws herself in the water to take her brother's bride's place. I am just so excited. I, this is one that I am very, very much excited for and to receive. Oh my God. God, I'm so happy to own this. It's so gorgeous and I cannot wait to read it. I've heard such amazing things about this already. Thank you, Verily. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to own this. So there we have it, everyone. That is my book haul for today. Oh my God, I'm like overheating and I, it, my floor is a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. But thank you so much for watching this vlog. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you got into the end, comment a sea emoji for the girl who fell beneath the sea, any kind of sea related starfish wave emoji, anything you fancy down below. Let me know which of these books, ones I haven't read already, which ones you want me to read the most. I always think that's so helpful and interesting to see which ones you guys are most interested in. Thank you for watching to the end if you've made it to the end and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.